Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at color and luminance range masking in Adobe Camera Raw. Range masking provides a non destructive and completely re editable way to limit the local adjustment tools to a range of colors or tones. We'll start with luminance range masking. I'll select the graduated filter, and then to darken the top of the photograph, I'm going to set my exposure down to negative one stop. Then I'll click and drag, but we can see that as I darken the top of the sky, I'm also darkening the trees. From my range mask options, I'll select luminance, and then reposition the sliders to adjust which of the luminance values are adjusted. If I move the slider in the brighter areas, you can see that the sky is no longer adjusted, but only the darker values of the trees. That's the opposite of what I want, so I'll move the slider on the left over to the right to prevent the adjustment from affecting the trees, but leave it in the brighter values of the sky. I can also use the smoothness slider to control the transition between the tonal values that are affected and those that are not, sort of like the fade range. As I move it over to the left, we can see that the transition is very abrupt. As I move it over to the right, it gets smoother. If I hold down the Option or the Alt key and drag the smoothness slider, we can see the mask that Camera Raw is using. I generally find that smoother masks give me better results, even if the mask bleeds a little bit into the adjacent areas. All right, in this next image, I want to desaturate the blue in the sky, but not in the rest of the image. I'll select my adjustment brush, and then set it up to desaturate. But before I actually start painting in the image, I want to point out that I'm going to want to select the blue part of the sky that is the most different from the other colors in the image. So I want to click up here in the bluest part, not in this lighter desaturated portion near the horizon. It's just going to help make sure that the adjustment looks as natural as possible. All right, so I'll use the right bracket to get a little bit bigger of an adjustment brush and then start painting. And you can see that I'm not having to make a very intricate selection here. I don't have to worry about the sign. I don't really have to worry about this awning here or the top of the building. Now, currently everything within my adjustment brush is being desaturated, but scrolling down, I can choose range mask and then color. That will automatically select the color range selector, this eyedropper over here. And now I can click in the color in the image area that I want it to select. So if I have a specific color that I want to select, for example, that magenta color that was in the sign here, I can just click on it to select it. But if I want to select the sky and I click once, it's not going to select the whole sky. Now I can hold down the shift key and add to my selection. But I think when I'm selecting something like a sky, it's actually hard to accurately compare the color transition with a series of these little point samples. Instead, it's much easier to drag an area sample to ensure that all of the colors in the sky are selected. Okay, if I want to refine the color range, I can use the color range slider. Moving it to the right will include a wider range of colors similar to those that were sampled. So it's affecting more of my building and more of the awning here. As I move the color range slider over to the left, now the adjustment that I made is really isolated to the blues in the sky and we don't get the adjustment in the building or the awning. If I hold down the option or the Alt key and we drag the color range slider, we can actually see the mask that Lightroom is using. Now at this point, I don't really want to desaturate the sky completely, so I'll scroll up and just move the saturation slider a little bit to the right. And of course, we're not limited to a single adjustment. I can use any combination of all of these adjustments together. So in this case, I will also add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of dehaze. All right, in the third example, I really want to just create a little bit of separation between the trees and the sky. And let's quickly reset 
the settings here so that when I paint, nothing actually happens. I want to turn on the mask, so I'll enable it here, and I've changed the color of my mask to red. I'll get a little bit smaller of a brush, and I'm just going to paint over the trees here. And you can see I'm not making a very precise or detailed selection, right? I've got a lot of sky selected, but I'm going to use the color range masking in order to isolate that. And in fact, in this example, both the color and the luminance range masking work, but you can only use one mask at a time. So let's pick the color range mask. And then since I have the color range selector already selected, I'll click and drag over an area in my image that is comprised of tree and no sky. And we can watch as Camera Raw automatically adjusts that mask for me. Now we can hide the mask and then scroll up. And in this case, I want to decrease the exposure just a little bit, as well as maybe add a little bit of a temperature shift there. Of course, there's lots of other attributes here that we can adjust, including, for example, if we wanted to use our luminance range masking, we could reduce noise and say just the darker areas of our images. So there you go. I hope you enjoy the new color and luminance range masking in Adobe Camera Raw.